Hey, Gary Dobbins here on our Q&A, and we're going to answer Yamamoto questions today. We've got the Yamamoto Open on May 19th and 20th. Uh, it's a great event every year, and so we decided to sandwich all of our Yamamoto questions together and make a run of them before the uh, Yamamoto Open. Again, May 19th and 20th on the California Delta. We started off fishing a Senko, basically Texas rigged. Um, I throw a six inch a lot if I want extra weight for the bait to fall a little bit faster and deeper. I kind of rig it tech exposure. You know, you just run the Senko straight through and I just hook the point of it underneath it. Anyway, can keep that Senko nice and straight though. That's the key to the bait. And this little tail just wags. As this bait falls, it just wags. I flip this bait a lot. I've caught a lot of really big fish on it, just flipping it weightless. I throw a six inch a lot at Clear Lake and the Delta, but you'd be surprised. It is a great size for the spotted bass in Shasta or Orville or any of our spotted bass fisheries also. Um, that's a 5 aught Gamagatsu EWG, uh, just a great hook for that size of bait. Here's the most popular size, this is a 5 inch Yamamoto Senko. Um, it does have an O-ring on it, which is, I'm not sure Yamamoto's really real happy about that whole O-ring craze because it saves you a lot of baits. If you just, if you whack your rig that and you hook it in the middle, first time you get a bite, you're going to lose that Senko. But with an O-ring in there, you might catch 6, 7, you might even catch 10 fish on one bait. Um, this is the best wacky hook that I've ever used and it's called uh, Yamamoto's split shot slash drop shot hook. This I put a little bit bigger hook in there where you can see it. That's a three aught. It's, an, it's a new size but most commonly I throw a one aught. Um, that's probably my all around size. I have a nail weight stuck in the end of it. You can actually fish it completely weightless and let it fall like this and basically both ends of the sinkhole will wiggle. I think this outfishes the Texas rig probably 10 to 1. And then if you want it to fall fast and get down there on the bottom where you can fish it, um, you know, put your nail weight in it, nail weight in the head, put it in there a little straighter than I did that one. Um, now I can fish this bait 45, 50 feet deep if I have to. And it's just an eighth ounce nail weight. Um, it falls really fast straight down and so you can fish that bait really deep. It's a lot of times I fish this over a jig. I mean, I think the fish will bite it better than they do a jig. My favorite colors is, I actually have four colors I throw a lot. This one here is the watermelon um, green pumpkin laminate. I throw that one a lot, especially early in the year. I throw baby bass a lot. I throw the natural shad a lot. And um, what am I missing? Oh, just a straight green pumpkin. And anything green pumpkin is always good. I mean, no matter what the water color is. And I carry those four colors the most. But, uh, but I've netted fish on every color you can possibly think of, from yellows to pinks to, you know, I remember getting a workout one day with a lady who caught so many fish in an FLW tournament on a peanut butter and jelly. I mean, it just she really got it in my head, and I went to my local shop, which was the hook, line, and sinker, and I bought every one of the peanut butter and jellies he had. But really, I'm not sure. I think all the colors are good. I think it's more the action and presentation. But anyway, you want to catch a fish, grab a bag of Yamamoto Senkos and whatever your favorite color is, you know, wacky rig them, Texas rig them, nail weight them, however you want to fish them. A lot of guys will put them on a dart head and fish it on a dart head. Down in Texas a lot, one of the tournaments I fished down on Amstead was uh, the guys were just bullet weighting them. You know, just a regular Texas rig with a, with a 5 16 or 3 8 ounce bullet weight on the front. There's really not a way that you can fish a Senko wrong. You, anyway, you need to catch a fish, Yamamoto Senko, and you'll get her done. You know, as far as equipment on the Yamamoto Senkos, if I'm fishing in the Delta with a 6 or a 7 inch um, Senko, which I do a lot, a lot of times I'm pitching it on a flipping stick. And you know, you got so much cut down there and you know, I use a lot of 20 pound line. I'll even, I'll even throw um, a braid a lot down there, a 50 pound braid. But I do pitch a lot of 20 pound P-line fluorocarbon. Um, it's, just, it's just, I want the bigger line. So I use a flipping stick or a pitching stick. 735 or 736 Dobbins Champion Series is really popular, but, uh, but I real upsize my line. If I'm fishing one of our, uh, one of our reservoirs like Shasta or Oroville or Folsom or you know, all of our spotted bass fisheries, you know, I downsize my line. I don't very rarely ever go under eight, but I throw a lot of eight pound, a lot of P-line fluorocarbon eight pound test. And uh, you know, I throw a lot on a spinning rod too. And spinning rod, casting rod, whatever your choice is, I do both. But I throw a lot, it just seems like I get more bite sometimes with the spinning rod, just by the way I shake the bait. And if I'm throwing a wacky rig with a nail weight in it, you know, I really shake that bait a lot. I really move it along, and it stays on the bottom. Um, 
So, you know, so just think about like a 743, a 742 even, um, DX743 is probably the absolute best Senko rod. We sell a ton of them for that. But if you go into the Champion Series, you can drop back and use like a 703. But I'm really popular on the three powers. You know, the one thing about the Senko is, is the amount of bed fish I catch on it. And not only do I catch a lot of them off the bed that I see, but when I'm looking for fish, I'm always blind casting a Yamamoto Senko out in front of the boat. So all the time I'm looking, I'm sitting there and I'm just casting and shaking and looking. And, and I catch so many fish just blind casting a Senko. And a lot of those fish are on beds. Uh, a lot of them staging up pre-spawn. But it's just a great bait to fish for bed fish or pre-spawn fish while they're moving up. And it's a great bait to have in your hand while you're running down a bank just looking for fish and just cast that bait out in front of you. You know, and if, most of the time I'm blind cast and I'm throwing one of my favorites, you know, uh, you know, green pumpkin or a laminate green pumpkin watermelon. But a lot of times on the beds, you can pick up like a lemon yellow or a pink, you know, a hot pink, something you can really see. And I tell you, those brighter colors excite those bed fish for some reason too. So, I mean, I usually do have a couple bags of really bright colored, you know, most of the time either a bright yellow or a hot pink, um, and I'll keep a rod rigged with that on the deck. But most of the time when I see a bed fish, the first cast I put in there on that fish to see how it's going to react is I do throw one of my natural colors, you know, like the green pumpkin. I've got it in my hand, and it's just so easy to throw over there. And if it's a hot fish, most of the time I'll catch that fish on the first cast. If not, I'll see how she reacts if she comes off and she comes back. You know, then I'll go ahead and I'll play with one of the brighter colors that I can really see really well. Tom asked about what's the best hook to use on a wacky rig Senko. Well, the best hook is actually a new hook that I have right here, and I've got a three odd in there where really you can see it well. It's called a Gamma Got to Split Shot Slash Drop Shot Hook. It's the best going. This is a three odd. Normally I do throw a one odd, but uh, it's a lot easier to show the three odd. It's but it's a brand new hook with Gammy this year. And they've had the split shot drop shot hook forever, but uh, this year they actually come out and they put the little weed guard on it, which makes it really cool because it saves you a lot of hang ups and a lot of hooks and uh, will never cost you a bite. It's a really soft hook, uh, weed guard. So that is by far my best hook for throwing a wacky rig Senko. You know, you can't really fish a Senko wrong. Um, the cool thing is, is no matter how you fish it, I mean, a fish is going to bite it. If you want to Texas rig it, you want to nail weight it, you want to throw it weightless, wacky, um, everything works. Um, just go out and pick your favorite color up and go out and throw sinkholes. I guarantee you're going to catch fish on them. That's probably the best bait that I think that's ever been made. The question is, fishing sinkholes, do I do anything different with the seasons? Gosh, that's kind of tough. Um, Yes and no. I mean, I tend to, when the fish are really up, you know, early spring, I tend to throw it maybe more weightless. Um, and in the wintertime, I tend to throw more with weight, you know, a nail-weighted Senko, you know, because I can fish it deeper, basically. And the cool thing about nail weight and also, like, it lets me fish faster, you know, and it gets on the bottom really quick. When it's nail-weighted, I mean, it just falls like a bullet to the bottom. Um, so early winter, I tend to do more nail weighting. And in the springtime, once they get up real shallow and start spawning and stuff, I tend to fish more without a weight at all. Um, but that's kind of like the only time that I really fish one over the other a lot. My question is, is uh, my favorite size of Senkos. That's really tough. I, I definitely throw the five inch the most, and I think everybody does. Um, but I throw a lot of six, and throwing sevens is not uncommon. If I'm fishing in California Delta, I throw a lot of 7-inch Senkos. Clear Lake, I throw a lot of 7-inch Senkos. If I'm fishing Spotted Bass, I throw a lot of 5s, but I do throw some 6s. Um, and the heavier weights, the bigger Senkos just got more salt in them, they sink better. So you can actually fish them a little bit deeper if you don't want to nail weight them and you really want that wacky fall out of a 6-inch Senko. So you can tend to fish a little bit deeper. But all sizes are good. I think five, the 5-inch five is just most popular. And honestly, it could be strictly because there's a 10 count in the 5 inch bag and only a 5 count in the 6 inch bag, but, but you will find the 5 inch to be a more popular. My question is, what do I fish Yamamoto wise besides the hula grub and the Senko? Because I've talked about those a lot in my seminars forever. Um, the, another bait that I throw that, that Yamamoto makes that's really cool is the, uh, is the Ika. Um, some guys call it Ika, I call it Ika, it's I K A. And the cool thing about that bait is if you rig it backwards, and when I say backwards, basically you start your hook point in at the tentacles, 
and you bring your hook point out down at the base. It's kind of like an upside down palm tree, some of the guys call it. And, uh, but what it does when you pitch that bait in, if you let it fall on a slack line, it will actually run away from you. But you can pitch it at the front of a dock, then that bait will slide up underneath that dock. Or you could pitch it to a line of tulies, and it will actually swim its way back into the tulies. It's a really cool bait. I catch a lot of fish on it. I throw a pretty big hook on it. I mean, it's all hook. I mean, most of the time I'll put a four rod in it, and it, that bait is all hook. One cannot grab it, you know, that he doesn't get caught. But um, so if you're looking for another great flip bait, you know, think about the Yamamoto Ica. I got a great question about nail weighting, uh, nail weight baits. And, you know, of course, you know, we all nail weight a Senko. But another great bait for nail weighting is, uh, is the Cuttail, is Yamamoto's Cuttail. And I actually won a tournament, a uh, little turkey shoot, really, with a whole bunch of anglers over in Korea. And I, did, I couldn't find good Senkos. I couldn't find Senkos, but I did find a bunch of Cuttails. And I nail weight it just like you do a Senko. You know, put the nail weight in the head, wacky rig it. And uh, it is a phenomenal nail weight bait. And uh, I fish it a lot of times in place of the Senkos. The one advantage over this cut tail that it, you know, that it has over the Senko is you don't seem to get it. If you're gonna nail weight bait, you're gonna wacky rig them. Certain amount of fish, when they eat that Senko, they're gonna ball that Senko up. It's gonna rehook itself over the point, and you'll feed him, and you'll have him, and you'll lose him. The cool thing about the cut tails is it's a lot smaller diameter bait towards the end. So as they ball that bait up in their mouth, and you set the hook, it's easy, pokes through the tail of that bait and it still catches them. Um, that's probably the biggest advantage of using a cut tail is the fact that you don't have as many ball of sinko up rehooking it over your hook, you know, when they eat it. When they suck that bait in and they got the whole bait in their mouth, you know, with a cut tail, you'll still usually catch that fish. Once in a while, you know, on a sinko, you'll ball it up and you won't catch that fish. But yeah, be sure to think about a Yamamoto cut tail. It's a great bait to nail weight with. My question is from Greg. Greg asked about, um, do you use painted heads on your jigs? Like this brown one I have on this Yamamoto hula grub. And you know, I do, and it's a confidence deal. Um, and he asked, and also Greg, Greg's second part of that question was what color heads. I only actually have three. I throw brown, I throw black, or I throw green pumpkin. And it, I don't think it really matters a lot. And a lot of times I've caught them on a plain unpainted head. And it's just a confidence factor. But I like a brown head a lot or a black head or, you know, this one would look a little bit better with a green pumpkin. But, but I do like to paint my jig heads. One of the, you know, I actually, this, I bought these painted, but I pour up a lot of my own. And if you're going to dip them, the best way to do it is actually I get them, I hold on to it and I heat it up with a torch. And then I put a pair of needle nose pliers over my eye. Then I dip it down in the, in the powder and I pull up. And that way you always keep your line ties you know, clean. You don't ever have to clear a line tie. Kind of cool. But uh, yes, and the, the, uh, the dipping powder coat is by far the strongest that I've ever run across. So yes, I mean, I do believe in painting my heads. Confidence factor for me personally. Um, give it a try. I very rarely throw a, strand, a standard rubber jig anymore because most of the time it's just so easy to, you know, to have a couple of bags of hula grubs. Football head's the most common way. This is a half ounce. Um, just run that bait in there. And rig it in there where it's nice and straight with the tails. And uh, that's such an awesome jig because it doesn't flare out as much as rubber. So it can kind of be kind of a finesse jig. But I mean, I've just, I've won so many tournaments on a Yamamoto hula grub. You just can't hardly fish the thing wrong. It's got a big lead head in it, so it's going to be on the bottom, and it's a crawdad imitation. Um, but, you know, a couple tournaments I can think of right off where I was actually dragging a one ounce, a one ton jig, we call it, when I was dragging it and catching them out of 45 to 60 foot of water. You want to do that, you really need a long rod for number one, maybe 12 pound test line, a little bit less stretched with 12. Some guys will use 10, but I prefer 12. And, uh, but I want a long rod like a DX744 or, you know, something long, seven foot four. And the reason being is that much, you know, fishing that deep, the hardest part is getting a good hook set. With a longer rod, it picks up so much more line. So you get a lot better hookups and your landing percentage is really, really good. And as soon as you swing on that fish and load that rod, really get on that reel and tighten down and put a lot of, you know, really finish sinking that hook into that fish. Because even fluorocarbon has got some stretch to it, especially when you start talking about fishing 45 to 60 foot of water. But uh, a lot of times in the winter time, 
you know, January, early February. I mean, I catch a lot of better quality fish fishing it down deep like that. The colors, I really only throw two, and again, it's just whatever your favorite is, but mine is green pumpkin and cinnamon purple. Um, that's my two favorites, cinnamon purple flake and green pumpkin, and they look so different in the water, and one or the other seems to always work for me, but uh, I just can't talk about how many fish I've caught on a, on a Yamamoto hula grub. It's actually one of my favorite baits. I've always got a bag or two of them in the boat, and so be sure and grab some hula grubs. It's great bait. If you're bed fishing, we're out here this time of year in the springtime. If you're fishing on a bed, they make this thing in so many bright colors. It's a great bed bite, um, a great bed bait. Young motor hula grub on a football head. If, I, if I'm bed fishing, a lot of times I upsize my line a little bit. And, uh, I'll go with at least 15, maybe 20. And the reason being is you're, you're fishing that fish, and as it grabs it, you know, you're going to set the hook really hard. A lot of times you'll pop them, you know, slack line pop a little bit. So I upsize my line a little bit when I'm fishing on a bed. Um, but if I'm dragging deep, just remember, when you're dragging deep, the bigger the line is obviously the bigger diameter and the more, the more resistance you have in the water. So you're going to get a bigger belly in your line. That's the reason I, I don't ever drag more than 12. And 12-pound 12 CXXP line, I mean, you could just tow a boat with it anyway. So um, just think about 12-pound test, 10 maybe, at least 10 CXX. Drag them deep, and you just can't believe it. And the thing that's so surprising about fishing a one-ton jig, guys will look at it and think, man, that's such a heavy bait. What will the fish feel that weight? I absolutely promise you the fish don't care. And the good thing about that one ounce, that one ounce jig is you, you stir so much more sediment up off the bottom as you're dragging it. And I believe that's the whole key. Is that thing is sitting there and it's touching and you're dragging that, that bait along and it's stirring that sediment up, sediment up every time it touches. I believe that that really, you know, gets the fish's attention. I think that really, you know, gets it going. It looks like a crawdad, you know, trying to get away. So I, the heavier the better. My good, you know, my good late friend Pat Donahoe, he used to throw one and a half ounce heads. And the only reason I don't, because I don't have a mold and I can't find them, but he used to drag a one and a half ounce. And then you catch a 12 ounce bass on a one and a half ounce jig. So think big jigs, get it on the bottom. You know, a lot of guys want to throw three quarters. I want a one ounce because I want it on the bottom and the fish really don't care. And the cool thing is they have to get it. They can't just suck it up real easy like they can a small jig. It's a thunk, 50 feet of water. Thunk, you will feel that bite, and uh, it's a great way to fish. I, it's one of my most favorite ways to fish in, in the early winter. You know, my question is, what's an old-time technique that, uh, you know, that will work today if the guys will just use it? Uh, well, a couple of them pop into my mind, um, split shot in number one. But a bait that really sort of sticks in my mind, which I still use a lot, is the Yamamoto Grub, you know, the 5-inch Super Grub. It, that bait still catches a ton of fish for me. You know, a lot of times I throw it out and I'll let that bait sink to the bottom and I swim it back. I mean, I use it like a crankbait. I call it swimming a grub. Most of the time I'll put it on a quarter ounce dart head and I use it just for like a, like a crankbait. Um, it's a great technique and I catch a ton of fish on it. And believe it or not, I catch a lot of really good fish on it. I mean, big ones. Um, so that's another bait. One of the old time techniques that's kind of faded away is the super grub, you know. And, you know, back there for a while, if you weren't throwing a grub, it was as crazier than the Alabama rig technique is today. Um, and I just always keep them there, and I still, salt and pepper is my favorite color. I do throw green pumpkin once in a while, but I just throw it out and I just swim it back. The best way to rig a super grub really is, I just throw it on a dart head. Most of the time I'm throwing it on a quarter ounce dart head, and uh, you can actually rig it what we call tail up or tail down. Everybody's got their different ideas of which way is better. Um, just throw them at rig it just the opposite, and you'll see the different action in the water and a completely different look. Um, the one tip that I really will say that will help you a lot is when you're rigging that super grub on there, just put a drop of super glue, and you run it up there, and that way the bait won't pull off. You can cast it as hard as you want, and uh, it'll stay on there, and you can catch a lot of fish on it. Most of the time, I'll rig a half a dozen of them before I even hit the lake. So, I mean, as if one finally does bite the tail of the super grub off, I just grab another bait and tie it on really fast. So, super glue on a super grub will, uh, will help you on your next fishing trip. In closing, this is Gary Dobbins with uh, all the questions about the Yamamoto tips. Be sure and check out the Yamamoto Open on May 19th and 20th. It's going to be a great event, and everybody's going to be there. Good luck to you.